Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming along uh, today. So I've been asked to give a brief explanation uh, from the Buddhist perspective on how to be happy. Um, just 10 minutes or so. Um, and obviously happiness is a huge topic. Um, with Buddhism, we might say that all of Buddha's teachings are really an explanation of how to be happy on many, many different levels. Uh, so rather than going, you know, the whole way, uh, right up to the happiness of full enlightenment, I thought we would just look at how to establish uh, a basic happiness in our life, a sort of foundational happiness, um, and then how on the, understand on the basis of that understanding, we can then begin to get some insight how deeper states of happiness are possible, a real lasting happiness, finally an enlightened happiness is possible. Um, just one note on Buddhism in general. Um, so I'm just going to read one, actually the first sentence from Modern Buddhism, uh, Geshe Kelsang's most recent book, where he says, uh, the instructions given in this book, so the instructions on Modern Buddhism, are scientific methods for improving our human nature and qualities through developing the capacity of our mind. So Buddhist practice, Buddhist teachings are scientific methods for improving our human nature and qualities through developing the capacity of our mind. So when we first hear that, that may seem initially a little surprising that Buddhism is being described as scientific. Um, but that's really its beauty and that's really why it's still 2,500 years after Buddha taught modern. Um, because everything that I say today, you can test for yourself. Um, and if you do test it out, experiment with it, then most likely you will verify it. You will empirically verify it. You will verify it in your own experience and see that it's true. And I, I hope you'll do so, because if you do that, then uh, you will be able to establish happiness in your heart. You will be able to establish the basis for a happy life and a meaningful life. So where should we start? So Buddha said that we all have two basic wishes. All living beings have two basic wishes in their heart. They all wish to be happy and they all wish to be free from suffering. Um, these two wishes are functioning all the time and basically that's why we do what we do. You know, the reason you talk to this person and not that person is because you want to be happy. The reason why you seek out this job and not that job is because you want to be happy. The reason why you go to the left and not the right is because you want to be happy, right? All the time. So that's quite interesting because it means that almost continuously within our heart, we're seeking happiness and, so to speak, moving away from suffering. We're continuously moving away from suffering and seeking happiness, moment by moment. Now that's very illuminating because it also implies we haven't found it, right? <laughs> We're still seeking. We're still moment by moment thinking, well, maybe I should move a little further to the left or maybe I should go talk to now this person or maybe seek out that job. So we're always seeking happiness and we haven't found it. So some people might say, well, that's because a lasting happiness, a real pervasive happiness just isn't possible in life. In fact, we kind of say, that's life. Um, and when we say that's life, we don't mean happiness is possible. We're basically saying that's life. Things don't work out. Happiness isn't possible. But that's not Buddha's view. Buddha's view is that um, that's not life per se, rather that's mistaken life. It's contaminated life. It's the life that we are experiencing because we're looking for happiness in a place where there's no happiness to be found. Um, so what Geshe Kelsang uh, says is that we need to seek happiness from a different source. We need to seek happiness from a different source. 
So what source are we trying to find happiness in at the moment? So if we check, just basically, at the moment we have a tendency to feel that happiness will come about from getting the external conditions right. In other words, we feel that happiness depends upon externalities. And therefore, we're constantly trying to manipulate the externals, aren't we? Like I said, if, I, if I'm with this person, I'll be happy, not with this person. Um, if I have this job, I'll be happy, not that job. Now, there's such a basic flaw in that approach. Because if your happiness depends upon something outside of you, you have essentially set yourself up for unhappiness. Why? Because you can't control the externals. We know that, right? Like, if you can only be happy when the sun is shining, you're going to be unhappy a lot of the time, especially if you live in England. So, if you can only be happy with that person, actually, if you check, because we're, we, we end up clinging to that person, there's anxiety within our mind already because there's already an anticipation of, oh, what happens when that person goes away or if I can't stay with that person or if they get sick or whatever the situation may be. In other words, with that view, we've actually set ourselves up for unhappiness. So where does happiness actually come from? So both in, in modern Buddhism and in his book, Transform Your Life, Geshe Kelsing explains, you know, happiness and suffering are states of mind. And so their causes must be from the mind. They must be within the mind, not within the external situation because they themselves are states of mind. Happiness is a state of mind, isn't it? It's in your heart. It's a good feeling in your heart. And so the cause of happiness must be from within as well. So what is the cause of happiness? So Geshe Kelsang says, um, uh, and this is definitely a sentence to memorize and take away with you, the real source of happiness is inner peace. The real source of happiness is inner peace. So what Geshe is saying here, um, what Buddha says, is that whenever we're happy, our mind is peaceful. Um, and all the various positive states of mind that Buddha taught about, what we call virtuous minds, the virtues, love, compassion, generosity, patience, all of these minds are characterized by peace. There's a peace associated with those minds. So this is great news. Now you may f at first hear that and think, oh, Right, so all I need to find is inner peace. Like I haven't been looking for that already, you know. Actually, if you check, we think, yeah, yeah, inner peace. Well, that would be fine if I lived by a babbling brook somewhere in the countryside, but how can I accomplish that, like, you know, where I live in Manhattan? Um, in other words, we immediately think there must be some external condition for inner peace. But the whole point about inner peace is that it's within. And here's... You know, here's the amazing point. It's not difficult. Why? Because we can, we can all begin to establish a relative peace. Obviously, there are many, many levels to that inner peace. But we can all begin by getting a little bit more peaceful. And if we understand that, if we can learn how to do that, then we will discover, you know what? Happiness is easy. Happiness is easy. It really has to do with just learning to pay attention to the right things. So here's an experiment that we can all do, and I hope you will do. So I, I don't have time to lead a meditation right now, but um, you know, most of you will have some experience of this, or you can easily get some experience of this by just doing, for example, a simple breathing meditation. There are different ways to do breathing meditation, but all of them are basically characterized by a continuous returning of your awareness to the sensation of the breath, right? Breathing in, breathing out, and trying to allow your awareness of the breath to fill your mind moment by moment. 
course, what happens for us is we get distracted, don't we? Um, we start thinking about something exciting or we start thinking about some argument we had or we basically just go over last night's TV or something like that. But our mind wanders and the moment we notice it's wandered, we have to pull it back. And to begin with, that's what our meditation mostly consists of. Oh no, I got distracted again. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Gradually, after a period of time, maybe we discover that we can stay with the breath for two, three, four consecutive rounds of inhalation and exhalation. Now, of course, you know, that doesn't qualify you for yogi status. Um, but it's enough. It's enough to experience that if you do that, in other words, if you stop paying attention to all the agitation, the agitating, distracting thoughts, even for just a, a few brief moments, your mind becomes more peaceful. Would you agree? Your mind becomes more peaceful, noticeably more peaceful. That's incredible. Why is that incredible? Because what that shows us is that if you let go of the agitating thoughts, the mind naturally becomes more peaceful. It's not like you need to let go of the agitating thoughts and then make the mind more peaceful. You let go of the agitating thoughts and automatically the mind becomes more peaceful. It's like if you have water and you shake it up, the moment you stop shaking it, it settles naturally to a peaceful, still place, right? It's not like you have to stop shaking it and then make it peaceful. It's the same. So water just naturally settles, so does our mind. What this indicates is that the nature of our mind is peaceful. Does that make sense? It's its nature. In other words, when the mind isn't agitated, it's naturally peaceful. It's naturally still. It's naturally spacious. And if you give yourself permission to hang out with that experience of peace, what you will discover is that within that peace is happiness. There's a light, spacious, flexible, good, pleasant feeling there. Happiness. What I would like to encourage you to do is to do this. Ideally, you know, do this several times a day, but get in there first thing in the morning before you get too crazy <laughs> with all the stuff you have to do, too agitated. Just momentarily let go of the agitation by focusing, say, on your breath, but it could be another virtuous mind, love, compassion. We teach many objects of meditation. Um, and just give yourself permission to let go of that agitation and to allow your mind to be peaceful. And then towards the end of your meditation, it could just be a few minutes, make a note of that change. Make a note that your mind now feels more peaceful and give yourself permission to hang out there. We actually have to give ourselves permission because we're so busy and we feel obligated to think about all the things we need to do. So you need to actively give yourself permission to just enjoy a happy mind. Hang out there. Enjoying it. So important. Because what you will discover is, as I said, it's your nature to be peaceful. Happiness is right here. It's with us. It's within us all the time. Just give yourself permission to tap into it and enjoy it and recognize this is my nature. Which means it's possible for me to be happy. It's possible for me to change, to become a happy person. This is totally possible. I just need to pay more attention to the actual source of happiness peaceful, positive minds. So if we establish that first thing in the day, then what you want to do is, obviously, as much as possible throughout the day, stay with it. So when you leave your little happiness exercise in the morning, um, take your happiness with you. Don't leave it on the meditation seat. Take it with you. Take your happiness for a walk. You know, like when you take your dog for a walk. If you take your dog for a walk, you don't need to like fixate on the dog all the time. That would be a little neurotic, right? Like, where's the dog? Where's the dog? Where's the dog? 
No, you just let your dog do whatever it needs to do, and you check in on it every now and then, don't you? What's it up to now? You know, which bush has it gone off in hot pursuit of now? You know, who is it barking at now? <laughs> and then you just need to sort of rein it in, right? Just pull it back. So in the same way, take your happiness for a walk. Enjoy it. Enjoy that peaceful, happy mind. And every now and then go, oops, where's it gone? Because most likely, we got excited about something, basically the delusion of attachment. You know, Geshe Kelsang, he explains, why is it difficult to stay with a peaceful, positive, happy mind? Because we're so familiar with the delusions. Anger, attachment, jealousy. So you'll have plenty of opportunity to hear more about those. But they basically arise and they steal. They steal our attention. And in so doing, we lose our peace because immediately we become agitated. What we want to do is notice that. Ah, look, I've become agitated. I've seen something attractive and I'm now fixating on that. Now, normally you think we have no choice. I saw something attractive. They made me look at them. But the truth is, no, it's not the person who's disturbing our mind. It's the fact that we've allowed our self to pay attention to them in an inappropriate way so that attachment has arisen. It's the attachment that's disturbing our mind. Or on the other hand, you know, we see something that makes us, um, that we regard as unpleasant and we develop some anger. The problem isn't the person. The problem is always the mind. That's what we understand through this exercise. I've allowed agitated minds to arise. So all I need to do is not get rid of the person. It's just drop the mind. And what can you do? Just do your little breathing exercise or whatever it is that you're focusing on. Just bring your mind back there. Do a little bit of breathing. Just ignore whatever it is that's agitating you until you experience a little bit of peace again. <sighs> How nice. And then again, give yourself permission to hang out there, to enjoy it. Does that make sense? It's really like a dog walking your dog, your mind. You know, one moment it's all attracted to something, the next moment it's barking at something, and that's what we do. <laughs> but if you just keep reining it in very gently, then gradually you'll be able to build up a peaceful, happy mind that you can just take with you wherever you go, all the time. It'll eventually become your default setting. In other words, you wake up in the morning, you feel good. You feel happy. There's a, a famous saying within Kadampa Buddhism by one of the great Kadampa Geshis over a thousand years ago called Geshe Chekawa. You, m m many of you know him. Um, so Geshe Kelsang has written Universal Compassion, a commentary to Geshe Chekawa's great text, very brief text called Training the Mind in Seven Points. And one of his, Geshe Chekawa's famous slogans is endure both whichever arises. So in other words, when difficult circumstances arise, you use them to train your mind. In other words, rather than trying to push away the difficult circumstance, let go of, just let go of the agitating mind. That's the problem. And return to a peaceful state. If good conditions arise, pleasant conditions arise, we need to endure those as well. Not teeth grittingly endure. No, enjoy them. So let's say the sun's shining, you're enjoying flowers, you're with a friend, whatever it is, enjoy. But don't think the enjoyment is coming from the object. What you're actually enjoying is a peaceful mind. Because if your mind was agitated, you wouldn't enjoy it. Right? We've all been in a perfect idyllic setting like the beach with an unhappy mind. If the beach automatically induced happiness, then everyone on the beach would be happy. But that's not the case. You need a happy mind to enjoy the beach. So when you have a happy mind, enjoy it. Don't go grasping at the object. Enjoy the happy mind. In this way, we can do what Geshe Chekawa says. Always rely on a happy mind alone. That's our base setic, setting as spiritual practitioners. Someone who is training their mind. Someone who is improving. Rely on a happy mind because a happy mind is a peaceful mind, is a virtuous mind. Always go back there as many times throughout the day. 
let go of what is, whatever is agitating you, settle in that peaceful experience, and take it with you. Don't seek happiness out of, outside of you. Bring happiness to your relationships, to your situations, to your job. Then everything becomes a source of happiness. Your whole life becomes pervaded by happiness. Of course, there are challenges, but you transform those and use them to train in a happy mind. If you do this, you will begin to experience happiness in your heart. Gradually, you'll begin to stabilize happiness in your heart and you will open yourself up to your potential for a lasting happiness. That won't seem like a fantasy. It'll seem like an actual possibility. Because all I need to do is continue letting go of these agitating minds, the delusions, and stabilizing these peaceful minds. And eventually, my, mind, my, my life will be pervaded by happiness. And that's true of everybody else, too. They all have that potential. And eventually we'll see, through our own experience, scientifically, enlightenment is possible. And we can actually help others to establish lasting happiness as well. So how wonderful if we could be a source of happiness, not just for ourselves, but for others in this world. We need a lot of sources of happiness in this world, don't we? Anyway, so thank you very much. Uh, I hope that uh, this made sense to you and that you feel inspired to experiment yourself, uh, to train in this, and that I know that if you do so, you will verify this within your own experience that this is true. And it's a wonderful truth, isn't it? That happiness is not this unattainable thing outside of ourselves, but it's really here within our heart and primarily to access it all we need to do is learn to let go of the delusions relax abide enjoy okay thank you very much